Well, how y'all are? This is your buddy George Jones over here at the Berg and Gun Range with my next installment on. You know, I haven't done anything dumb lately, so I thought, well, let's talk about a recent uh, channel creator who had an accidental discharge on camera using a particular type of firearm. And that particular type of firearm was this. Thompson Center contender. Now, what he did was he pulled her back, cocked her, and fired it, and it snapped. Then he went and pulled her back and let it go, and it fired. What he forgot was, was once you let that hammer down, that action decocks itself internally and is no longer a cocked action and the hammer will not stay back when you pull it because the whole action of the gun is now relaxed. Being unfamiliar with the Thompson Center contender and how it worked is what caused him to have that accidental discharge. Now the weapon was pointed in a safe direction. I was kind of up at an angle like that. He was coming down on it to cock it. You know, and when he let go of the hammer at the back of the hammer stroke, the hammer fell forward and fired that time. I think it snapped him probably because he had a hard primer or something like that. And, you know, that happens. So any time that you have a Thompson Center contender, you break it down, break it down, at, and that cocks the action on opening. Okay. That sets the action up to be cocked. Close it, pull the hammer back, and it'll stay back. Okay? If you let the hammer down in the normal fashion, it's no longer cocked, and if you pull the hammer back to cock it again and let it go, it'll go. Okay? So every time that hammer goes forward, that action has to be recocked in order to function correctly. Okay? A little safety tip not everybody shoots one of these things okay not everybody shoots the contender so when you're a contender greenhorn so one of your friends has a contender or something like that and you're going to shoot it fine now you know the hammer goes down then you have to recock the entire action recock the entire action to get it to work again Otherwise, you'll get into this thing where when you let go of the hammer, it can fire. All right. Having said all of that, let's move the old cam dameler back a little bit. We'll get a little bit wider field of vision here. Okay. We're going to shoot suppressors. Now, this suppressor is a suppressor. This is a Advanced Armament Company Pilot 22. Okay, it's a real suppressor. It's not a fuel filter. It's not a solvent trap. It was manufactured originally as a suppressor. Okay, and we're going to shoot it and see what it sounds like. It's a little windy today, and we're going to shoot Remington subsonic out of it, a suppressor ammunition, and we're just going to shoot it right here. I'm going to shoot it right now. We'll see what it sounds like. Take that in there, close that action up, cock that action, get her over here on the block, and see what it sounds like when it goes off. And it sounds like that. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And somehow or another, I managed to hit that steel target through the uh, through the target backer that's up down there. I'm shooting at the bottom middle target with the Thompson Center. In a minute, we'll go down there and see how my marksmanship actually fares. <laughs> Isn't that cute? 
quieter than a BB gun. Junior assassination kit. We'll shoot one more. Some years ago, the gentleman who owns this brought it over and we eliminated quite a few squirrel or quite quite a few crows. A congress of crows. And they were getting that big walnut tree beside my house and keeping me awake where I was trying to get sleep in the morning where I was working on midnight shift. And we eliminated that congress of crows and you'd shoot one and go be and fall over, and all of his buddies look down and say, Hey, Bob, Bob, what, what's the matter with geek? <laughs> I had to wait until they were in season, you know. We have a season in Kentucky. That's something, isn't it? Pretty quiet. All right. Let's do something else. Let's do something else. Whew. Isn't that thing cute? That's just a little cutie pie thing right there. All right. Rough Rider. <laughs> Rough Rider has come out with a cowboy tactical or with uh, factory installed Picatinny on top of it, fiber optic sights, uh, standard Rough Rider in every other way with the exception of the muzzle is threaded for a suppressor. Now, there's been some successful revolver designs that have been suppressed in the past. Well, the Nagant revolvers or Nagant revolvers were successful because they were a slide forward cylinder gas seal arrangement. You know, um, there was a, I guess you'd call it an assassination variant of the Dan Wesson revolver where the cylinder gap is adjustable and they managed to suppress it effectively. Um, looking through this guy, I ate quite a bit of cylinder gap there. I don't know if we're going to have any luck or not, but we're going to give it a try and see how it shoots. There, there is a notch sight on the back of this thing that I can aim through it, through the uh, Picatinny. So we're going to give it a try right quick. I think I'll put it on there. And then, yep, it goes right on there. We're screwing it. We're screwing it here. It's going on good. Fits right on there. All right, let's see if we can get her galadin. See if we can get her galadin. We'll see how it shoots with um, subsonic 22s. And then we'll shoot some stangers so we can see how that works. Um, I don't know what these guns cost in this configuration. I know what they cost wholesale. And uh, I don't think it'll be a gun giveaway gun, to tell you the truth. Because I know what it costs wholesale. I don't hope very hard that this will be a truly suppressible revolver, okay, but I'm going to try one shot without earmuffs on, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to shoot at the top left hand target. We're going for the sound here more than we are the accuracy. 
mother. Ah. <sighs> uh, <laughs> I'm like, what's your point, dispatch? <laughs> That's it right there. Jeez. Yeah, it, that doesn't help you a bit. I don't think it's any. I think that's it. Yeah. Uh, there is a thing, there is a thing in industrial design called design drinking design thinking. I think when they come up with this, there was also some design drinking going on. You know, um, as a suppressor firearm, this is about as effective as a suppressor firearm as uh, the zip was as a defensive firearm. Um, this is um, Yeah, it's it's was subsonics in it. It's as loud as an unsuppressed gun with subsonics in it. So I'm not even going to go for the stingers because it's going to be as loud as a as a uh, unsuppressed gun with a stinger in it. Just going by what I've learned so far. Well, let's go down and look and see how the accuracy is anyway. <clears throat> Here's the Thompson Center, and I didn't shoot it or the hoot. Of course, it's not my gun, you know. Oh, it was all down here. Okay. The Rough Rider with the suppressor on it, actually, one, two, three, four bulls, two flyers. That one looks like a keyhole. So, the Rough Rider with the suppressor on it, it didn't shoot too bad but it was kind of loud for a gun with a suppressor on it and, and subsonic caliber ammunition. <coughs> That's, uh... <sighs> so as, as it rides right now, the, uh, Tactical Cowboy Revolver with a good quality manufactured suppressor on it. Mm, it's not a suppressor gun. Not a gun for suppressing. Okay. Another thing about this guy, it's got, you know, you can use the, the Picatinny rails are bolted on there at the factory. And they're configured in such a way that uh, it actually has a fixed iron sight in the middle of it, and you can use it without a scope or so forth on it. Uh, now, here's another thing it comes with a thread protector installed on it. The example that we have did not come with a wrench. So we wound up using a piece of leather and a, and a set of vice grips to get this off. That's something else to think about. Let's go ahead and shoot it again and just see how it shoots without the can on it. I'll shoot it at the Thompson Center target.
and we'll just try and get some kind of a practical accuracy term out of it without the can on the end of it and see if the gun actually works and see if the sights, the way they've configured the sights on it are good. You know, that those flyers may have been due to me trying to shoot with that can on there. I mean, I try and give them a break. I mean, you know, there's guns out there that, you know, like the Thunderstruck, it just didn't work out at all, but I like to try and give the thing a chance. All right, here we go. Let's shoot a little bit. Shoot six, see how it runs. Got her loaded. What in the world? Let's get her unloaded. I mean, it ain't gonna work. Problem here. Let's try it again. Almost didn't want to go that time. Ooh, it's got a hard spot in it. This Rough Rider is exceedingly rough. This is a very rough Rough Rider. The action is not as smooth as the previous guns I've reviewed. So it's kind of a rough Rough Rider. But it does shoot. Oh. If this was my break-in group, then this must be my breakout group. Mm. Mm. That action is very rough. The trigger pull and brake is not consistent on it. The action does not want to work smoothly on all of the cylinder stages. Um, I don't know. I don't know. 
apparently there was some design drinking going on. Well, anyway, um, that's a nice long video. Um, I don't know. Uh, the retail of this gun is a little bit more than a regular Rough Rider. Um, it's a nice gun overall. You know, it's nice that you can put a optic on it. Uh, the sights are set up nice to use as iron sights. Uh, the gun doesn't come with a wrench. Or this one didn't. Let's put it that way. They may not have put it in there. They may have been an accident someplace. Okay. Overall, as a suppressor gun, it's a zero. Uh, as a rough rider, this one's a little rough. Okay. Uh, the next one may be as smooth as glass. I don't know. Well, that's about the size of it for, hey, let's try out a new gun. Uh, remember your Thompson Center safety tip. And uh, God bless everybody. And we'll see you when we see you. Bye now.